I'm just a guy who loves Disney and has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm File91E and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E and uh, 4th of July. It's now the 4th of July and uh, you're probably watching this on the 5th of July, but I'm recording this on the 4th of July. You can, well at least I can hear some fireworks going on outside, so the merriment is here. Uh, rained a little today, so that's really fun. Though. So happy 4th of July to everybody who is celebrating that. And uh, if you're not celebrating that, that's okay. You can be an honorary American today. Just go stuff your face and uh, wave an American flag. Um, so let me just get this right out of the way. This might get be a little bit of a longer show just because it is 4th of July stuff and I have a lot of news so, you know, and stuff to talk about. Um, but yeah, so just keep that in mind. Uh, also, um, last week I, I, I noticed one thing before, you know, before I get into the show. I posted a video explaining why I can't re you know, reply to some comments. Um, uh, it has to do with the whole YouTube Google Plus thing. Uh, it's not anything on my end; it's on your end. It's basically, uh, you know, if I'm not, if I can't reply to your comment, you have it only uh, so that uh, certain people can reply to your comments rather than everyone. So um, uh, you might want to fix that if you uh, want to ask me a question. Otherwise, I'll just have to give you either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, and I won't be able to answer your question, which is a bummer because I want to answer everybody's questions as much as I can. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll have a little bit of extra time. I'll be able to go and answer everybody's questions, but some questions I can't answer because of that whole little snafu with the Google Plus stuff. So watch that video. Uh, if you ask me a question and I haven't answered it yet, check that out. Make sure that's there. And if it is there, re-ask me. Maybe I just I happen to miss it. I don't know. I'm not sure. So uh, just keep that in mind. I'm not ignoring people. Like, well, like one of the questions was, um, uh, the, especially the one that I wanted to really answer was, if I may ask File, uh, it's from Phenomenal Classic 93. If I may ask File, when you said parts of the girl made it difficult for you to I, relate to her, what were you or were you referring to her being homesick? Um, to answer the question, yes, and the whole moving thing. Uh, I've never really had to move, or if I did move, it wasn't that bad. Um, I never really got homesick like that, and plus she's a 12-year-old girl, and I'm a 35, or you know, a 30-year-old man, so it's tough for me to kind of get into that mindset. It was still a great movie, but it was you know tough for me to do that. So I would like to have typed that, but I couldn't because I can't reply to his stuff. But yeah, so just keep that in mind. Okay, the where in the land answer from last week was the uh, Sorcerer's Workshop in the uh, Magic of Disney Animation Building or the Disney Animation Building in Disney's California Adventure. They have some really cool areas in there, so totally, um, uh, you know, think you should go check that out. Uh, also, August, I'm just letting you know, will be a pretty fun time. Uh, I wanna be reviewing, well not reviewing, but comparing uh, Walt Disney World rides to Disneyland rides, or the Disney, or the Disneyland version rides to the Walt Disney World version rides of the same attraction, so, you know, uh, you know, I, I want to compare haunted mansions and compare small worlds and things like that. Uh, I've already recorded all of that stuff. It should be fun. Uh, hopefully, I can make it a, a good time. And uh, if everything goes right, you might like it. Maybe I'll do it again. So uh, I hope you all will enjoy that. I know I had fun making it. Uh, so that's great. So yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on with me this week. Just uh, enjoying the Fourth of July. But yeah, my weekend was fill, uh, filled with filming. So that was all. You know, it's always fun. And I always like that. So, uh, yeah, that's what's been going on with me this week. Let's get right to the news. Well, it's the 4th of July and Disney is celebrating as such. Uh, I mentioned last week that the Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios all have special celebrations planned. So if you're in the area, head to one of those parks to catch the festivities. Also last week, I mentioned that the Interventions West Corridor next to the character spot uh, was going to become a D-Zone relaxation area. 
Well, it's pretty much completed its transformation and, and now guests can relax and cool down from a hot day in the parks. Uh, complete with a refreshment counter, tables and chairs. Uh, it was rumored to have a charging station, but uh, now they still might put that in, but uh, for now there is no d device charging station in there. Uh, maybe something to look forward to in the future. So that's pretty neat. As you can see, just basic stuff, just you know, uh, some, some place for uh, people to sit and all that stuff. Uh, just an update on the refurbishment of the Flame Tree Barbecue at Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's finished. Yes, I've been mentioning this over the past couple weeks here. Uh, yes, the quick service restaurant is back up and running, complete with a new covered uh, seating area, uh, covered ordering areas, as well as a new updated menu. They added a couple things. Uh, so be sure to check that out when down at the Animal Kingdom. It looks really nice. Uh, you know, they covered all the stuff because, you know, to keep people out of the sun, because for whatever reason, the Animal Kingdom is a little bit warmer than any other uh, park. Uh, I have no idea why, it just seems that way. Uh, well, it's been confirmed that the last day of operation for Disney's Magic of Disney's animation attraction uh, will be t uh, July 12th. Uh, this is all part of the massive renovation that is about to occur to Disney's Hollywood Studios. It is also rumored that Walt Disney's one, uh, one Man's Dream will close as well, uh, though that hasn't been verified. Uh, if they do close One Man's Dream, I hope they replace it or, or upgrade it with something else uh, along, the, along that line. So I do, do think there, there, there should be a Walt Disney attraction right there. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, with, the up with the upcoming closure of the Magic of Disney Animation, uh, some of the uh, character meet and greets will be relocating to other areas of the park. It is expected that Mickey Mouse will be moving to the area near to uh, the Studio Catering, which has previously been used to, as a meet and greet for uh, location for Darth Vader during the Star Wars weekend, so he's back in that area. Uh, this will be a, just a temporary location until a new meet and greet is ready uh, at Disney Junior, so they're going to be doing a whole lot of renovation there. Uh, Minnie Mouse will be moving to the center stage uh, in the fr in front of the Great Movie Ride, and Hero and Baymax are expected to be saying goodbye to Disney's Hollywood Studios, although this remains yet to be confirmed. So you, you might not be able to see Hero or Baymax again. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Disney has also confirmed that Disney Quest will be permanently closing in 2016 to make way for the new NBA Experience attraction coming to Disney Springs. Neither a closing date for Disney Quest or an opening date for the NBA Experience has yet been announced. Uh, according to Disney, the new NBA Experience will be an expansive, one-of-a-kind destination that will feature hands-on uh, activities that put uh, puts families and guests of all ages right in the middle of the NBA game action. Uh, guests will immerse, uh, or enjoy immersive uh, NBA video productions and numerous interactive experiences, as well as a uh, re or as a restaurant and retail store. So uh, who knows what's you know what's going to happen with that? It should look pretty uh, interesting. Uh, I love Disney Quest, um, so I hope they really go all out and make this right. Instead of upgrading Disney Quest, it seems like they're just going to. Uh, you know, just nix it. They've been kind of eliminating a lot of the arcade stuff in the parks. I'm not sure why, but I guess this is this the final nail in the coffin for that. So yeah, you got until 2016 to enjoy Disney Quest, so get it in while you can. And finally, the Gasparilla Island Grill, the quick service restaurant at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, is scheduled to be closed from August 23rd to September 4th, reopening to guests on September 5th. Gasparilla most recently had a major refurbishment back in early of 2013, so they're doing some work there. Uh, just keep that in mind if you're staying at the Grand Floridian Resort. So yeah, that's the news for this week. Let's get right to the reviews. All right, guys, the first couple things, or the first uh, thing that I want to talk to you about today is the Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes. That's really hard to say for some reason. Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes. Uh, both of these uh, are going to be you know, kind of patriotic-themed reviews, so you'll see why in a minute. Uh, now, what these guys say, the uh, Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes are, uh, it's a scenic canoe ride, minor attraction, go uh, as, as soon as it opens, usually around 11 a.m., Skip if the lines are long, closes at sunset. The most fun way to see the rivers of America. Um, this uh, has been around pretty much uh, for a while. Uh, it's one of the things that uh, I always looked at Disneyland as, you know, as being pretty unique and having. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen paddle boats, but I've never seen these canoes before. And uh, whenever I saw, you know, think of Disneyland, especially the Tom Sawyer Island or the Pirate's Lair over there, I always think about these canoes going around the rivers of America. Uh, now this uh, is located in Critter Country in Disneyland. Uh, it used to be the Country Bear Land or whatever it is, but it's located there. Uh, and this opened, actually, this version opened uh, on July 4th, 
1956. You see what I did there? Nine for uh, July 4th, 1956. That's why I kind of held it off for today. Uh, it originally was called the Indian War Canoes, um, where basically uh, you had two uh, Native Americans or Native American, uh, you know, you know, dressed up people like that, take you around the rivers of America, and they would point things out, kind of the way, uh, you know, the uh, guides do today. Uh, there is one in Tokyo Disneyland called the Beaver Brothers Explorer Canoes because I don't think they understand the whole Native American thing and uh, and all that stuff. They the whole uh, you know American history, Wild West, that sort of stuff. So they kind of have to, you know, make it more universally friendly. Uh, then there also used to be one in Walt Disney World and Disneyland Paris. Uh, the uh, the one in Walt Disney World used to be the Mike Fink's uh, keel uh, keel boats or something like that, uh, but that's gone. That, that, I think that pretty much went out in 1994, something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, in 1971, this reopened as Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes to capitalize on the popularity of the Davy Crockett television show. Uh, everybody loved that. And uh, the explorers, or the uh, guides, you know, were now wearing coonskin caps and all that stuff. And, um, you know, it was it was fun. It was, it was one of the, you know, random things, you know, it was one of the few things that you actually had to, you know, put some effort into in order to, you know, experience the attraction. Now, uh, the boats are about 35 foot long, uh, and there's two guides, and uh, basically you just kind of go around, you know, you, uh, you sit in these rows two by two, and you are taught how to row these canoes, and you just go around the rivers of America, and you see all these different sites. There's a couple different things that you can only see using the, uh, you know, either riding the, your, the, uh, the river boats or the uh, other things like that, uh, but, or by riding the canoes, and uh, because you are uh, controlling the canoes you actually have to make way for the bigger boats because they're on a track and they go around the you know this thing uh, but with these canoes you guys can go wherever you want to you are in total control uh, there is no tether you know that sort of thing so um but yeah that's pretty much it uh, you, you know you hop into a canoe and you go around the rivers of america uh, when we were down there they were not open this is actually opens very seasonally uh, it's only open if the uh, park is uh really really packed uh or certain or open during uh you know certain uh times of the year uh you know usually when it's really hot or something like that they'll have the uh the uh the rivers of america open up and uh, they'll really uh, get the canoes going uh so it's right there uh, in critter country the entrance is and you got to walk down to the you know to the river they set you in there and they and you go on your way obviously they since they weren't open when i was there i couldn't get on it and you know experience it uh, but uh, from what I've read and what I've seen on YouTube, it's it seems pretty interesting. Uh, you know, um, you, uh, you know, again, you're doing all the work with that stuff, and you actually do explore a little bit, which is fun. So the novelty of it's very good. I'm not sure if how it ranks up with you know with uh, Space Mountain or whatnot. Uh, but the fact that you get to kind of you know kind of control where you go is pretty you know you know fun, uh, and it's very safe. And uh, you know it obviously. You know, they want to make sure that you, uh, you know, have a great time. They don't want anything capsizing or anything like that. So, yeah, that was my experience with the uh, Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes. It was fun to see them, though, because uh, in Walt Disney World, they don't have them anymore. But it was just fun to see them there. It's like, oh, that's cool. That's, a, that's an option that, you know, that we could have gone on, but uh, had they been open. You know, that's, you know, that sort of thing. So I want to—I think I want to just break into the ratings now. Uh, I got the Nate rating for the uh, Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes. Okay, literally no opinion. I don't know, man. I don't even remember seeing them. Oh, he's typing something now. So let's see what he uh, what he has to say. See if he goes for it. He doesn't have any uh, any actual ratings, so N A means nothing because we didn't get on them. Uh, I've taken too long. Anyway, so what am I going to give the Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes? I'm going to give this, they gave it three, I'm giving it two. Uh, this seems like kind of a, one of those, if you have time and it's open, go on it. If not, you know, just avoid it and you can, uh, you know, go about your time the rest of the park. Uh, if you're, you know, one of those people that go to Disneyland all the time and has been on all the big rides and everything, this might be a fun experience if it's open for you to check it out, to see a different side of Disney. The fact that you get to see all these different little things that you wouldn't normally get to see uh, is really nice. 
uh, it's just a fun you know breakaway uh, but as far as you know rating you know comparing it against all these other attractions it's definitely a two star it's not terrible uh, you know it's not like a uh, you know shoot 'em up gallery or anything like that because there is an element of fun to it and honestly I would have liked to have tried it had it been open uh, but it wasn't uh, but I don't know maybe if I got on it it would you know it'd be bumped up to a three it wouldn't be any more than a three but for right now I'm just kind of you know I'm, I'm giving it a two because it's only open seasonally it's a diversion sort of thing and um, well uh, that's just my opinion so yeah the Davy Crockett Explorer canoes in the Critter Country in Disneyland two stars check it out and now a random Disney fact with file 91e Back in 1956, Walt Disney imagined an area called Liberty Land, which had a revolutionary era flair and the main attraction being called the Hall of Presidents. Audio animatronics, however, had not been developed yet and the presidents were only going to be mannequins. In any case, due to time and money, Walt took his mind elsewhere to focus on other things that he had to deal with. And that Liberty Street area was not developed until during the planning of Walt Disney World where the street was redesigned and reimagined into a whole area called Liberty Square, complete with an audio animatronic version of the Hall of Presidents. And that was a random Disney fact with File 91E. See what I did there? I tied all this stuff in, you know, the, the facts and everything. It's all 4th of July based and stuff like that. See, it's very fun. And now the next thing and final thing I want to review for you today is the Disneyland story featuring great moments with Mr. Lincoln. This was one of the things that I really, really wanted to see while I was down over in Disneyland. Now what these guys say, the great moments with Mr. Lincoln is... Nostalgic exhibits documenting the Disney success story followed by an audio animatronics patriotic presentation. Minor attraction during uh, go during the hot or uh, crowded period of the day. 15 minutes including the pre-show. Um, there's a lot of history between this and I want to try to dive into that and then we'll go into what how my experience of it was and then I'll give you some uh, footage of the great moments with Mr. Lincoln presentation uh, for this patriotic 4th of July holiday. Uh, this is located on Main Street USA in Disneyland and uh, this opened depending on when you want to talk about it uh, if you, it, it opened in 1964 for the World's Fair. Uh, it was a very popular thing, and uh, this opened in Disneyland on July 18th, 1965, pretty much one year after. Like I mentioned in the, uh, the trivia this past time, uh, Disney wanted that Liberty, uh, not the Liberty Square, but the Liberty Street area. He wanted to do a Hall of Presidents. He wanted to have all the presidents up there moving around and doing all this stuff. He wanted to have all of those being animatronics and all that and all that. But he ran out of time and he ran out of money. People came to him and said, well, I like this, uh, this animatronic uh, idea. Can you at least give me one president? And Disney was like, well, I'll give you Mr. Lincoln. Uh, Loved Abraham Lincoln. Walt was Disney was a huge Abraham Lincoln fan. Even as a kid, he dressed up as Abraham Lincoln in his school and would go around reciting the Gettysburg Address and all that stuff. He was known for doing that. Um, so he was a big, you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln fan. He considers it one of the best. Uh, well, obviously, he is one of the best presidents we've ever had. Um, but you know, but Walt Disney loved him. So they came to him, you know, for the 1964 World's Fair and said, can you do this? And he said, you know what? We can. We were going to do it. There's actually a funny story uh, featuring this. When they previewed it for the people who paid to get, you know, to, to have this attraction running, uh, the, the animatronic being the first human animatronic ever, uh, you, know, you know, that Disney ha had ever created, uh, you know, the curtain goes up, he stands up, and then... Back then, hydraulic fluid was red. A hydraulic line burst right here, and this red fluid started filling up the president's shirt. And one of the guys in the audience goes, this isn't recreating the life of Mr. Lincoln, this is recreating his death. So uh, I, I read that and I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, that actually happened, and they, you know, the Disney Imagineers had to work tirelessly, tirelessly through the night because it was literally opening the next morning. And uh, as, soon as, as soon as it opened up, the show went on and the Disney magic happened and it didn't break down since. Uh, they had, uh, it ran, I think, 
uh, during the two six-month periods during the uh, nine, for the 1964 World's Fair. And during that second period, that second six-month period, it, uh, they created a whole second one over in the Disneyland area, and that's the one that we're going to be talking about today. So from 1965 to 1973, it was pretty much the great moments with Mr. Lincoln. They talked, uh, you know, he, he recited the Gettysburg Address and all that stuff, and he did his stuff. And in 1973, they switched everything completely to the Walt Disney story, which was basically a film about Walt's life, and they didn't mention Mr. Lincoln at all. He was behind the screen. Because this was right, you know, after Walt's death, they wanted to do something for Walt, so they uh, had a lot of exhibits showcasing all of, uh, you know, the different tidbits about his life. They had a lot of things there for you to see, and uh, there was a 23-minute uh, film about Walt's life and the success of Disneyland and things like that. Uh, so that was nice, but they kind of pushed Mr. Lincoln to the back. Uh, in 1975, there was uh, they uh, eventually evolved the two, um, which was uh, they had a hybrid of both of the shows. It was called the Walt Disney Story, featuring great moments with Mr. Lincoln, um, and that ran until 1984. So basically, they had the Walt Disney kind of stuff all in the front and everything, uh, and then they actually showed a uh, kind of a abridged version of um, the great moments with Mr. Lincoln, which was nice because Walt put a lot of uh, time and effort into that. And I definitely think great moments with Mr. Lincoln is directly linked with the man himself because he loved Walt Disney or uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln so much. And he, um, you know, he put a lot of time and effort into that show. That's one of the things that made him famous. Uh, now in 2001, this is pretty crazy. Uh, the Walt Disney story featuring great moments with Mr. Lincoln the journey to Gettysburg that has got to be the longest title for any Disney attraction ever and they switched the main focus to the Civil War I mean as it's as you know as it's always been kind of the focus on the Civil War it's where Abraham Lincoln was known for but they switched a lot of it to the Civil War uh, they, in, they introduced Matthew Brady who was a photographer for during the Civil War they had him being there talking about different things uh, there was a, a fictional character who was talking about you know life during the Civil War they added the um, I'm not sure if you remember from the American Adventure in Epcot the uh, the uh, song uh, Two Brothers, they added that in there too. They were throwing that in there. Uh, then they had Golden Dream play at the end. Uh, it was just a whole big thing. They really went off, you know, went out, uh, you know, off the wall with it. Uh, then in 2005, they uh, kind of pushed again, pushed me, uh, Mr. Lincoln to the back for the 50th anniversary of Disneyland. So that was all about, you know, they they celebrated the 50th anniversary of Disneyland stuff in there. Uh, but then in 2009, they brought Mr. Lincoln back for the Disneyland Story Presents Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. That's what we know now, uh, which is an updated, has an updated animatronic for Abraham Lincoln. It's all electronic now, so it looks more fluid and everything, which is great. And it combines elements of all the uh, all the other shows, um, like the, uh, the the Gettysburg Address is only cut down to like first two sentences, and then there's some other stuff. The two brothers thing is there, uh, so you get a good flavor or a, and a good feel for what uh, the actual um, uh, history of this you know, this uh, this presentation is. I mean, this has gone through a lot of transformations over the years. Uh, and we finally got to one where I think is actually really good. It's a good representative and uh, of, or, or it's a good representation of the actual great moments of Mr. Lincoln ride. And then there's also the Walt Disney story during the entrance and exit areas. So that's really nice. Uh, so that's basically what uh, the great moments of Mr. Lincoln is that we currently see it. You walk in, it's the um, first building right to your right as you walk into Disneyland and on the Main Street USA. On the other side is uh, Walt's apartment over the top of the um, the fire station. So obviously that's not that one. Over, over to the right is Great Moments. Uh, and you go in and there's a bunch of uh, different artifacts and things around for Walt's life. There's the bench that he used to sit on that where he got the idea for Disneyland. That was so cool to see. And you go through and they have this big um, like di not, well, not diorama but model of the, con the, con the Congress building uh, which is nice. And a whole bunch of other things for you to see uh, during uh, the pre-show. Then once you go in you can sit down so it's, it's nice and air-conditioned uh, so that's always fun you know and you just go in and sit down and then there's the show great moments with mr. Lincoln uh, you know there's a brief introduction about uh, his life uh, and, and, you, and you see you learn all about great Mo or uh, mr. Lincoln and then the screen rolls up and there he is he stands up says his stuff 
and then uh, you got the Two Brothers song, uh, and then you got Golden Dream on the way out, and then there's some all some more artifacts and pictures uh, along the way. Uh, we went to uh, to great moments with Mr. Lincoln during the uh, during our tour, our uh, Walk in Walt's Footsteps tour. This was one of the main stops that they uh, got us into. And uh, it was uh, one of the best experiences ever just because, you know, we got a lot of information from the guide uh, before and after the show. And uh, it's just, it was so fun, you know, to, to really experience that. This was one of the main things I wanted to see while at Disneyland. One of my favorite things just because um, I had seen it online. I would seen about, or I, I, I listened to it and, you know, with my... Uh, the uh, the magic of or the Disneyland 50 uh, audio set and I was like I want to see Mr. Lincoln that's the one thing I want to see I want to see Mr. Lincoln uh, and sure enough there he was and it was a great thrill for me to see that as a huge Disney fan as a, as a Walt Disney fan uh, I was really happy and I really enjoyed that so uh, I want to show you some footage uh, of the show uh, it's pretty much going to be the whole thing I think just because let's make this a good long show and uh, it's the 4th of July. What's more uh, patriotic than Abraham Lincoln talking about American ideals and things like that? So uh, here we go, my uh, footage of great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. Aroused me as I had never been before. 
What I have done since then is pretty well known. If any personal description of me is thought desirable, it may be said I am in height, six feet, four inches, nearly, lean in flesh, weighing on an average 180 pounds, dark complexion, with coarse black hair and gray eyes, and no other marks or brands recollected. Yours very truly, A. Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln became president faced with the terrible threat of civil war, a thing he dreaded, yet a calamity he was prepared to meet if he must.
we pay tribute here not to a man who lived a century ago, but to an individual who lives today in the hearts of all freedom-loving people. His prophetic words are as valid for our time as they were for his. And now, the skills of the sculptor and the talents of the artist will let us relive great moments with Mr. Lincoln. of the word liberty. And the American people just now are much in want of one. We all declare for liberty. But in using the same word, we do not all mean the same thing. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence. It is not our frowning battlements, our bristling sea coasts. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in our bosoms. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit which prizes liberty as a heritage of all men, in all lands, everywhere. Destroy this spirit, and you have planted the seeds of despotism around your own doors. At what point Shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall we expect some transatlantic military giant to step the ocean and crush us with a blow? Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track on the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point then is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer, if it ever reaches, it must spring from amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Neither let us be slandered from our duty by false accusations against us nor frightened from it by the menaces of destruction to the government, nor of dungeons to ourselves. Let us have faith that right makes might. And in that faith, let us to the end dare to do our duty as we understand it.
Well, if you guys stayed through that, I'm, 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 I'm happy that you did and you didn't skip past. It's a great show, uh, and I, I love it. I know it's, you know it's very patriotic, and some people aren't into that stuff, but I am, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. So, all right, let's get into the ratings. Here is the Nate rating. He said it's a 4.1, really good if you like classic Disney stuff. And it's also good if you just want, to, want air conditioning and a nap. That's a good point. That's actually a really good point. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all it is. So uh, what am I going to give Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln? Personally, I want to give it a 5, but I'll give it a 4. Um, I know this isn't, you know this isn't for everybody. It's kind of like the Carousel of Progress and stuff like that. A lot of people, you know, it's not thrilling, it's not cool or whatever. Personally, I like it. I loved it. I thought it was great because I loved the whole history behind this attraction and how this was one of the big things in the 1964 World's Fair. And uh, this is one of the attractions that Disney, you know, got somebody else to pay for and then brought it over to his stuff. You know, the, he literally got people to pay for the, you know, for the development of the technology that he would use to, you know, build his empire, which was just, it's, a, it's, a, it's fantastic to me. So I thought that was great. Um, and just seeing it and being a part of it, I was like, this is cool. This is really neat. Um, you know, it, I just, I, I just thought it was cool, you know, as a, uh, as a Disney fan, as a Walt Disney fan and, uh, you know, seeing all the artifacts, you know, ahead of it and, uh, and at the end of it, uh, was just great. So uh, I urge you guys to check out Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. When you go into it, don't just breeze over the stuff. Realize that this is a show that, uh, has a ton of hi historical Disney significance and uh, that 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 animatronic was well not that one personally but that you know this show debuted at audio uh, you know audio animatronics and um, you know without it we probably wouldn't have you know had it we would have been just getting you know talking birds in the tiki room this was the first time that you know a human being could be uh, you know made using an animatronic and um, well, you know, without it, we wouldn't have had Pirates of the Caribbean or, uh, you know, any of the other attractions that, you know, have people like that. So, uh, it's really awesome, and uh, I just, you know, I, I, I loved it. You know, Nathan gave it a 4.1. I'll give it a 4 just because I'm thinking, trying, you know, trying to think for everybody else. Uh, but personally, I'd give it a 5 just because as a, as a, you know, it's near and dear to my heart. There's a lot of Disney history there, and I just loved it. So I urge you guys to check it out. Nathan gave it a 4.1. I gave it a 4 for great moments with Mr. Lincoln. Well, again, happy 4th of July, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Disney news and reviews. It's all patriotic themed. Uh, so definitely check out the David Crockett's Explorer Canoes if it's open. Uh, it's, it, you know, it, it's interesting. It's not the most, you know, great thing there. There is some history to it. Um, but uh, if you have some time and it's open, you know, check it out. If it's not open or you don't have time to, you know, to, you know, if you're pressed for time or whatever, you can skip it. Uh, great moments with Mr. Lincoln, though. I highly recommend you guys check out. Even though I know it sounds boring, it's not a roller coaster or anything like that. But if you're a Disney fan, especially a Disney history fan, this is definitely one of those attractions you need to check out. Uh, and definitely takes you, you know, some time to, or, or, or give yourself some time to, to look at all the artifacts and exhibits beforehand. So yeah, if anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I want people to go to Disney World or Disneyland and have a fantastic, a fantastic time. You guys do it up for the 4th of July. I know your fireworks shows are gonna be cool. I can't wait to watch them on YouTube tomorrow. So if you are going to Disney World or Disneyland, be sure to go to ours.nettouringplans.com, wdwmagic.com, uh, or uh, micechat.com for all the latest and greatest Disney news uh, and Disneyland news, micechat.com is for Disneyland. Uh, and also check out waltdisneyworld.com or Disneyland.com because they have uh, all the stuff that you would need right there directly on their website. So yeah, that's it. That's the 4th of July episode. It's hard to believe we're already past July 4th. Why? Wow, where's time going? Where is this year going? Who even knows? But August, it should be fun. So uh, we'll get through July and uh, August should be pretty interesting. Hopefully I can make it uh, fun for you guys. So yeah, uh, we're, the We're in the World last week, I think, actually, was it's, it stumped all you guys a little bit. A lot of you thought it was the Art of Animation Resort. No, this was uh, the uh, magic of Disney's animation or the Disney animation building in Disney's California Adventure. So I'll try to stump you this week. So, guys, where in the land am I this week? And I'll see you next week for another Disney News and Reviews. Bye, guys.